Well, it is a beautiful sunny summer day at Reflection Riding Arboretum in Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's right. So tell us about Reflection Riding. Well, Reflection Riding Arboretum Nature Center is a facility that combines wildlife and our native plant uh, populations. Uh, it's a 317-acre facility that uh, has almost uh, 15 miles of trails throughout wow. that people can come and uh, and leisurely stroll through the countryside as well as uh, get up on Lookout Mountain and, and see the vistas that are uh, are really special uh, part of this facility. I know Lookout Mountain is kind of behind you and then Lookout Creek runs That's right. around yeah. the property border? Lookout Creek is, uh, we share about a mile of creek front uh, along Lookout Creek and our property is between the creek and the uh, Lookout Mountain itself. In fact, part of our uh, 317 acres are located on the side of Lookout Mountain and uh, combined with all the trails that the National Park Service has and Lookout Mountain Conservancy here in Chattanooga. So you probably then, I mean, this property running from creek bottom mm -hmm. and wetland all the way up you know, part way up the side of the mountain right. to where you're, you know, probably more of a granite based acidic right. soil where you'd find azaleas and those kinds of That's things right. growing. Uh, you have a, a tremendous variety of uh, plant cultures uh, simply because of the terrain that's here. Right. And uh, we have a we have a wetland area. In fact, it pretty well just dried up uh, about a month ago uh -huh. uh, from all the uh, winter rains and uh, flooding that uh, occur along Lookout, uh, Lookout Creek. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, the diversity of land, the diversity of plant populations is, ex is extreme here. And uh, we really pride ourselves in having a tremendous uh, um, a collection here that people yeah, can. And a lot of diversity. At. Yes. So before this was Reflection Riding Arboretum and, and Nature Center, it goes back to a privately owned history? Uh, the John Chambliss family uh, actually uh, started uh, this facility uh, 60 years ago um, this year. In okay. fact, this is our 60th anniversary when he made this a public facility uh, and enjoyed having people out enjoying the beautiful scenery and vistas that John Chambliss had identified early on. Um, he loved the idea and create, in fact uh, created many of the trails that are here. Uh, he created them as part of his, uh, his contribution to making this property uh, public access. And of course, um, uh, Marie Humphrey uh, had a home on this property and Marie was a very good friend of the Chamblisses and mm -hmm. They brought many plant collections from all over the uh, country and planted them here on this property. And so much of what is here is because of those early people who were propagating their plants from, from all over. And, and most of them are native plants. Right. It's a class four arboretum uh, okay. with 140 different species of trees that are documented here on a map and in the field you'll see uh, labels on each tree. And you mentioned that there are miles and miles of walking trails here, bicycles allowed? Yes, and, we, we permit you know. uh, the bicycles to come through here and uh, in fact in addition to um, bicycles and pedestrians we're encouraging people to take our carriage rides that are, are now available this year. Right, so one of the unique things that, that you have here at Reflection Riding is actually if you're unable to walk or bicycle through the property, there is a way to actually take a vehicle through or to that's uh, utilize one of your new horse-drawn carriages. Yes, that's correct. For, for the last, uh, you know, uh, 40 years, I would guess, you know, vehicles were permitted to drive through the right. riding, and that was part of the riding through on a, on a beautiful uh -huh. Sunday. Part of the name. That's right. Reflection uh, riding. They were able to ride through, and now we're giving more uh, people the opportunity to have a, a different alternative form of transportation, and that's through the horse-drawn carriages. Well, I couldn't pass up a chance to learn just a little bit more about the Chestnut uh, program here at Reflection Riding. And John's gonna talk to us a little bit more about how this program works and, and what the idea is behind having these chestnut trees growing here. Well, as you know, the American chestnut <clears throat> declined precipitously right. during the course of the 20th century due to an introduced fungal disease. So there have been a lot of efforts aimed at trying to restore the American chestnut Part of that has been a hybridization program, mm -hmm. hybridizing American chestnuts with Asian chestnuts, which are naturally resistant, resistant. to that blight, exactly. yes. And so we have a number of trees planted here on the property that are 
to varying degrees hybrids mm -hmm. and be, uh, the younger generations are increasingly pure American right. while trying to retain that one trait from the Asian which is the resistance to the blight. Sure. So in a study like this, what really is the end goal? Well, a lot of this is uh, testing and observation. Uh, each of these trees is labeled uh, and the careful rep records are kept about its you know, parentage. Right. And we observe them and we see how resistant they turn out to be mm -hmm. to the blight. Sometimes it may appear as though a particular uh, lineage is, is very resistant, but that may only be because it had not been exposed yet to the blight. Right. And so you have to wait a number of years and see what the long-term performance is. Mm -hmm. And so we have plantings like this and we can observe and keep records and, and learn more about which lineages are, you know, show promise and which, which sure. lineages don't. And from the little bit of research that I've done and some other segments that we've shot over the years with some folks from the Chestnut Foundation, my understanding is that we're, we're up now to generations that really are 15 sixteenths American chestnut and just 1 16th Chinese chestnut. And I think the hope is that, you know, we're, we're so close to being back to that pure chestnut and there's just enough disease resistance left then from the Asian counterpart to be able to introduce essentially what is our native chestnut back into You're right. commercial. The sense is we're, we're right there on the cusp. Yeah. We, we have some very promising cultivars, yes. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook. <laughs>